All right, guys, so like what I was talking about, uh, we move on with class, move on with chemistry. Even though we're remote, I still want you guys learning. So with this, you shouldn't just be watching this video and thinking it's going to stick in your mind. Everything that's in this video is fair game. So you need to make sure you got some paper, you'll be taking some notes, and this video will be out there like the other ones are for you to always go back to. Now in this, um, like I said, we're going to do some videos. I'll do some videos and send it out to you so that you guys uh, are not just being overwhelmed with the zooms, okay? So with this, uh, we're leaving off from those mold conversions. And hopefully in that, you guys are feeling pretty comfortable with those. You need to make sure you know how to do those mold conversions. If not, go back to those videos I've already uploaded because if you can't do the mold conversions, we're in big trouble. And I mean big, big trouble. You have to be able to do mold conversions. If not, when we get to stoichiometry, it's going to bite you in the butt. Big time. Okay? So in this, we're starting a totally different unit now. And uh, we're starting a quantum model of the atom. It's one of my favorite ones to talk about. And in this, there was this question everybody was asking. It was all popular back pre-1900. You literally can place things in categories. The categories you can place them in that I'm talking of is a wave or a particle. Now this is very simplistic and simple for you. It shouldn't be too hard because think about it. Think about a marker. What's a marker? Would you consider my marker a wave or a particle? Hopefully you're answering particle. If you're answering wave, no. Okay, for example, of a wave, everybody's been there before that you've went to a pond or a stream with calm water and you've thrown something out there. Maybe you've casted some bait that you're going to catch that massive monster catfish or that big monster bass. And what do you see happen? The calm water, it's all flat, it's still. And then when it hits, it starts radiating and you start seeing waves come out. That's a wave, all right? Now, you don't mix these two together. It just, it won't mix together. So it left us wondering and asking a question. What is light? So if I looked at you and I asked you, I'm going to ask you the question, what is light? We're going to classify it as a particle or a wave. You're going to have to decide on this. Now in this, we're going to be discussing this for a little bit. So I'm going to give you one of the answers. So whenever we're asking if it's a wave or a particle, it turns out light is a wave. So light is a wave. And it turns out this makes sense because what does, go back to our fishing example that I chose. So we cast that bait out there, you throw that rock out there, what happens? You start seeing waves, it starts radiating out. What happens in terms of that? It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It keeps expanding. Okay, my marker is confound to its space. It will not expand. It won't shrink. We're stuck with it at the position that it's at. Waves, they can expand. Light is the same thing. So it's like right now, whenever you're looking at it. Light, think about it on the back of your phone. You may be watching this video off your phone. Maybe you're uh, like 99% of the rest of the world and you got an iPhone, you got a good phone. And on the back of it, you got the little light. Now look at it. You can even turn it on and examine this. That little thing, it radiates out to light up a spot. So like, I gotta go this way, hold on. So like what I'm talking. Let's turn the light off in the room. So you can see the lights off. I got the view board behind me that's lighting things up. And you can see the little speck right there that's the light. Now look, we radiate from that little thing 
to light up that big area. You can see how big the area, my light, it's even expanding. You don't see it, but it's expanding up on the ceiling tiles and I'll have it held on the board. That shows me, <clears throat> and we'll go in more detail later on of who did this and how we came to this conclusion. That shows us that light is a wave. So in this, I want to talk a little bit about waves. Now hopefully in your science classes before you've been exposed to waves, but maybe you haven't. So I want to talk about some common misconceptions and and labels and stuff that comes with waves. This is important and this will apply even in life. So I'm going to just draw out a system here real quick. And then I'm going to draw some waves on it. So there's some waves. Now, before anybody says anything, I'm not an art teacher. I didn't measure this out. This is not evenly spaced out. But there's some waves. You can draw yourself some waves on your paper, and you can see here. Here's what I want to get to is properly labeling a wave. So there's some things that you need to know about. So in this, the first thing is these, these peaks up here at the top, they have a special name. So every one of these. They have a very special name. This is where I pause. I'd ask you if you know it. This is a little different for me. I'd give you a couple seconds. Someone would yell something out. Hopefully they would yell out the right answer. And someone would say crest. These are our crests. Yes, like the toothpaste. The top, the very top, the very, very top point of a wave, the highest point it reaches, that's what we call the crest. Now, whenever you break outside of that, and let's break down here. These very, very, the lowest points, these very low points that you look at here, they also have a name. These are also very familiar. So, what do you think it is? couple seconds, yada yada, hopefully you yelled out troughs. These are troughs. Like a pig trough, what a pig lead out of. Alright? That's what you're looking at with this. Now, like I said, this is just an introduction to waves. Okay? So, intro to waves. In this, there's two very important pieces of information that we need to discuss. In these two very important uh, pieces of information, the first one of which we're going to call wavelength. Wavelength it explains itself in the name. Wavelength is literally the length of a wave. So uh, you can define that if you want. I guess I should. Length of a wave. Now the big thing here is the one thing Mr. Hall has stressed to you, the I was told the other day I've had you in class seven times. So the seven times I've had you in class. I've probably stressed this to you, especially because the first, the first time I had you in class, we talked about the international system of units, and we talked about something very important. If there's anything you're going to get from my class, it's I want you to learn units are important. You must memorize units are important. It must be a part of you. You have to keep it to memory. The reason behind that I'm bringing that up Length of a wave. This is wavelength. So think about it. There's units that's going to identify this. Units that we typically are going to deal with are meters. We also have things, and this is one that will become very, very common whenever we start doing some mathematical work with these, are nanometers. 
Okay, now the key to this is you put a box around nanometers. The key to this is is with that, it's just a unit of measurement. Okay, it's a unit of length. I could do megameters, I could do kilometers, gigameters, uh, pedometers, femtometers. I can go all the way through. Remember all those prefixes I gave you from that prefix chart that you got to memory because pretty soon you got a quiz. Yeah, you got that to memory. Remember, I can still throw those in front. The big, big kicker of it is, is the meters. Okay? So memorize that. Have that to memory. Know it. The key to it is the meter. All right, we can put the prefix in before it. So the big important part that I want you to get from this is how do you get a measurement of a wavelength? So how we measure it is extremely important. The key to it is, is we will measure from the same point on the wave. So some examples of what we could use to measure with. These are the ones I would recommend, the ones that are simplistic and easier for you are the ones that you'll see are crest to crest other ones uh, the second one I would recommend is trough to trough So we're going crest to crest and trough to trough. The reason behind this is that is a defined point. So think about it. If I was trying to find the wavelength of this wave that I have going on, I could go from the high point, which is right here, the crest, to this high point, which is the crest. That right there is a wavelength. That's a wavelength for this wave. Now, another thing I can do, I can go from the trough to trough. Down here is the same thing. This low point, this low point, we measure here. That also is a wavelength for this wave. That doesn't change. It's still the same wavelength. Or anybody wants to get sarcastic and leave a comment on here, no, I did not measure it out and make sure it was perfectly the same. I, we're just using this as an example. These wavelengths are matching up and they're practically the same. That's what we're saying. If I went from a crest to a crest or a trough to a trough, it will be the same on a realistic wave. It will not change. The reason I'm saying do that is think if we've decided, hmm, I'm going to measure right here. That's going to be my starting point. Well, where's going to be my end point for getting a wavelength? I can end it, but it's got to be at the same point. That right there is a wavelength. But it's much more complex. It's a whole lot harder for you to be able to get that from these points because those are not set points. You're not 100% uh, sure if that's a set point or not. Now another thing, this is wavelength, another thing we're going to talk about is frequency. A little bit of frequency here in orange. Okay. I'm going to get me another color marker. Hold on. Yeah. All right, frequency is literally, it, it comes up in the name. It's what you're thinking it is. 
frequency. How frequent it occurs. Okay? So, and remember, these are not textbook definitions. I know you're not exactly used to my class yet. These definitions are like Mr. Hall's definitions to try to put it on your terms. So frequency is how frequent. Or let's just do how often. So the frequency, we're talking about how often the wave's going to appear. So in this case. So what we're looking at, this is where the wavelength comes back into play. How frequent is this wave? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to choose the same starting point. That's the key whenever you're measuring the frequency of something. So in this case, I'm going to use the crest. I'm going to start here at the crest. Mr. Hall, why didn't we use the trough? Well, the reason we didn't use the trough is I just chose the crest. You could use the trough if you wanted to. You can even use right here on the axis, that x-axis if you wanted to. It's all down to you what you wanted to choose. I'm choosing the crest because it's an absolutely defined point. So, let's see how many times this wave shows up. So I start here at the crest. Look at the sound effects, don't you? There's one. Crest. Two. Crest. Three. Crest. Four. What's the frequency of that wave? Four. Now within this, whenever you're looking at frequency, I'm going to tell you, there's going to be some defining and some calculations and some formulas we're going to use with this. But frequency is how often that wave shows up. And here in this case it showed up four, four times. Now that is measured in how often, like in a certain amount of time that it showed. Which is going to bring us into defining some formulas that you're going to be looking at. Okay? Don't freak out. I'm not going to start doing some problems with you yet. I'm just presenting these to you and we'll jump over to the electromagnetic spectrum. That's how we'll finish off with this first video. So, we're going to take all of this out. Give me some room. And we're going to talk about the light equations. So let's look at these light equations, okay? So the first one is that I got to stress to you is you have these two quantities we've discussed. You have wavelength and frequency that we're really going to care about. Now the first one of these, I'm going to tell you, both of them deal with a constant. And the first one of these, it's a constant that's very familiar to you. It's the constant C. You know this one because if I looked at you and I asked you Albert Einstein's most famous equation that everyone in uh, modern day will throw it off, E equals MC squared, what does the C stand for? Hopefully you're rolling off that C stands for the speed of light. In this case, the speed of light is equal to Wavelength times frequency. Now in this, we have special symbols to show those. So in this case, the first one is wavelength. It's a Greek letter called lambda. We'll define it here more in a moment. So it's kind of like a curved up H with a tail at it coming off at the front. Okay, that's lambda. And frequency is the Greek letter mu. If you take me for physics, you'll see this letter again. We use that as the abbreviation for velocity. But in this case, we're talking of frequency. So I wanted to find these out for you. So the first one we're going to talk about here is C, which is a constant. Remember, it's the speed of light. All right? So you're looking here at the speed of light. And the speed of light, it is a fixed number. Now, understand this is how, this is the maximum speed 
anything can go. Nothing can go any faster than this in our universe. And in this, it's fixed. Understand if it travels through mediums, it'll travel at a different rate. But everything in our class that we're going to deal with will deal with the speed of light traveling at this number. You do need to memorize this. This is the same as that volume conversion at standard temperature and pressure for one uh, mole of gas at standard temperature and pressure is equal to 22.4 liters and it also is the same for Avogadro's number that the number of atoms, molecules, particles, or formula units within one mole of a substance is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. In this, I did say 22.4 liters. If I didn't, my bad. I should have put 22.4 liters at the end of that. This speed of light, a lot of people abbreviate it 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Not us. We care about accuracy and precision in this class. So we're going to talk about 2.98 times 10 to the 8th. That is meters per second. Speed of light is 2.98 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That is your constant. You must memorize that. Now some things for me to stress to you here. The big one is right here. You know how Mr. Hall has his tricks? My tricks are not going away. The tricks keep expanding. Here is a hidden trick. What does that M stand for? It stands for meter. In that case, we're dealing with meters here. Your units of length has to be in meters in order to use these two in relations to do the calculations we're going to do. What am I saying, Mr. Hall, you're making this very confusing. I'm going to break it down simplistic for you. This is in meters, so your wavelength must also be in meters, which means Mr. Hall can create problems for you that you do not have set in meters. I can start you, like I said up here, the majority of the time you're probably going to be looking at nanometers for your wavelength. And guess what you have to do? Bada bing, baby, you got it. You got to do a metric conversion. That's why these things are so beautiful and they work so good. So make sure you memorize that. Now let's break outside of the speed of light constant. Let's break right here in this mad daddy messed up looking uh, H, as you would probably call it. But it's actually a Greek letter. This Greek letter, it is lambda. Lambda is the abbreviation for the wavelength. This is wavelength. I've kind of already gave it to you a little bit and looked at you and told you how these things are going to roll. This is going to be breaking for you here with this wavelength. What you'll be looking at uh, with this lambda is wavelength and examples that I can put it in. I can put it in nanometers. I can put it in meters. I can put it in kilometers. I can put it in micrometers. I can keep that baby going, okay? So pretty much I can throw any prefix I want to in front of that. Make sure your units are matching up. Whenever we did those mole conversions, you constantly see me labeling units. The reason I do that is whenever I go to do my calculations, I look at my units and I see if they match. If they don't, I know I need to do a metric conversion. Whenever we do, on the next video, we do some uh, conversion, we do some calculations with these, you'll see what I'm talking about. And then this last one here, here's the one that confuses kids a little bit, okay? Just being honest, I see that from year to year, students get confused by this. So in this, I want to talk about this funny looking V guy. He is the Greek letter of new. New. So in this, he is, he is the abbreviation very before frequency. 
Now, here's the funny thing. Frequency is measured within a quantity, and it has units. So I want to show you the one that will be real familiar for you, all of you is Hertz. It's a capital H with a lowercase z. Now, you'll probably do your z like that. For me, my, uh, my 2 and my z looks very familiar, so I always put a dash in my z's like this. So I know that that's a Z, so I know that's Hertz. Another thing that it is, is inverse seconds, which is just 1 over seconds. Which it also is seconds to the negative 1. The reason behind this is anything to the negative power, it's just the reciprocal of that fraction. Ask your math teacher about it, they'll help you out with that. Where you get back in class, I'll show you this right here is equal to 1 over seconds. I'll show that to you because whenever we start doing calculations, you're going to see that come up and you're going to be like, wait, now why, how, how is this possible, huh, what? Don't freak out about this yet, okay? Whenever we start doing some calculations, then you'll see it. Now in it, I, like I said before, we'll do some calculations. Uh, I'll start how we did the mold conversions. I'm going to do a big massive problem that shows you the whole belly of the beast and then once I show you the whole belly of the beast we start at a little baby level and we work up to it. Hopefully that helped you out with the mold conversions in years past. That's what's helped students before. So in this, just remember that mu stands for frequency. Alright? So within this we talked about wavelength, we've talked about frequency, we gave you the first light equations. The very first light equation you'll deal with is the speed of light equals wavelength times frequency, which is lambda times nu. Then breaking outside of this, there's a second equation that I want to talk about. Whenever you deal with talking, uh, whenever you're dealing with this, you're getting ready to see here with the electromagnetic spectrum, there's something that we like to deal with. You know what? Let's just go to the electromagnetic spectrum and then I'll come back and give you the second equation. So what we're going to do, I'm going to jump over here to the view board. We're going to do the electromagnetic spectrum and then we'll come back over here and we'll finish this video up talking about the second light equation. All right? All right, so on here what you're looking at, this behind me has two things within it. The first thing is, is the whole electromagnetic spectrum. And the whole image here is what we would call and consider to be the electromagnetic spectrum. So this is the electromagnetic spectrum, and in this I'll look at you and tell you this will come into play. I've already uploaded it and sent it to you guys in Remind. So you have that that you can look at. But also within this and outside of it is different pieces of information on it. You will be given this on your quiz, exactly as it is sitting right here. Now, the important aspect of it is is that you understand how to read and operate and look at this thing, okay? So this is the electromagnetic spectrum, and on the electromagnetic spectrum, we have what we call electromagnetic radiation. All that is, is different forms of radiation, of stuff that we can't see. You guys are already familiar with this, sort of, because you're already thinking of things that deal with radiation, like gamma rays, like you're thinking uranium bombs and atomic bombs and nuclear power plants and all of that absolutely is true and you can see right here is gamma rays at the very end of the electromagnetic spectrum. Whenever I'm talking about the electromagnetic spectrum, we read it differently on this one than you are used to. We'll read from right to left and the reason we do that, we do that in terms of energy. But on this electromagnetic spectrum, it has all forms of electromagnetic radiation that you are not thinking of. There are things in your life that you use every day that use and utilize electromagnetic radiation that you never even thought about. Maybe you're one of those people that you're still rolling around and you still listen to a radio station. 
And guess what radio stations work off of? Electromagnetic radiation that fall within the radio wavelength. In this, here's what you'll be looking at. Whenever you're looking at this spectrum, everything goes from radio, microwave, infrared, then it goes into the second part that I want to uh, stress to you. There's two different things on this. There just isn't the electromagnetic spectrum. There's also this little sliver right here. This little sliver between infrared and ultraviolet is zoomed out down here to what we call the visible light spectrum. And you've guessed it from what this is. This is what we see with our naked eye. Okay, so visible light spectrum is all the colors we see. Perfect example, what do you, what colors can we see are the rainbow. You guys have probably heard it before. In this, this goes in a certain direction in a certain way. Yet again, right to left. So what you'll see, Roy G. Bibb gives you the color for the visible light spectrum. So Roy is red. Uh, sorry, Roy, R is red, O is orange, Y is yellow, and you can see it corresponds. Red, orange, yellow, G goes to green, Biv, blue, so here's blue, indigo for I, V is violet. Another thing I like to stress out to students at this moment is whenever you're looking at this is to understand. Look what happens. We go from right to left. We go from radio to microwaves to infrared. When we get here at infrared, it goes then to the first color in the visible light. Infrared. Red will tell you what comes. Okay? So then we end here with violet. Violet then travels to the next form of radiation, which is ultraviolet radiation. Then it goes to x-rays, and then it goes to gamma rays. You can find some of these that's got cosmic rays, but we never really deal with those, so I'm not going to discuss them in the class. In this is knowing something very in particular here. Think about these different forms of radiation. If I asked you the question, are radio waves harmful? Can radio waves hurt you? Yes or no? For all of you that thought that was a trick question, that was not. I'm going to put a Y for yes and an M for no. So in this case, radio waves are not harmful, so no. Whenever I'm saying harmful, can they lead to death? That's what I'm saying. Microwaves, are they harmful? Can they lead to death? No. For all of you that want to argue with me right now and say, well, they can cause cancer. I had an uncle one time that he grilled and cooked everything within his microwave. And you know what? He ended up with cancer, Mr. Hall. It was the microwave. Okay, I love you all dearly, but no, microwaves cannot hurt you. Some good uses for these, though. That, that, that's what we should do. Let's go through some uses of these. Radio waves. What's good uses of radio waves? That's right. Putting out your favorite tune so you can be jamming as you're chilling at home on a quarantine or on a lockdown. I'm just kidding because we're going to get back to life as normal one day. And what we're going to be doing, we're going to be rolling to the movies. That's one thing that I miss so much. I love the, Mo the Logan movie theaters, by the way. Because there, not only do you get to get your own popcorn, but you get to season your own popcorn. And that is like... That is so much worth it for me. I love that place. And you get your own drinks, so you can get your own refills too. <laughs> so, listening to your favorite tunes, radio stations, stuff like that. Other things that use radio waves are like walkie-talkies. Uh, whenever you break it down, like uh, if you play with a 
band or something, they use any transmitters and stuff. Those are using radio waves. All right, microwaves, what are they useful for? Everyone probably just shouted out, like, cooking food. I'm so proud of y'all, you ain't even in college yet. And look at you. Your microwave, what's those things used for? It's useful for cooking. And this is actually how it works, is with these microwaves. What happens is those microwaves go in, and they're at a certain frequency. Okay, so this brings up a good time to talk about two sections here that are broke on this electromagnetic spectrum. You have frequency, and you have wavelength. Whenever you're looking at this, this frequency, and when you're looking here at this wavelength, these electromagnetic radiations are fixed at a certain frequency and at a certain wavelength. You will not change them. They are not interchangeable. Okay? Radio waves stop here. Microwave stop here. Infrared stops here. Visible light is this section right through here. Then you have ultraviolet, which is here. Then you have X-rays, which are ends here, and it goes into gamma rays, which will keep on going. It will not change for you. This is what you'll keep seeing with it. So whenever you look at this, this is where these spectrums of the electromagnetic radiation are breaking down. Within this, those are fixed positions in terms of wavelength and frequencies. So let's jump into our lovely... Set my phone here for a second. Let's go into our lovely section over here of infrared. So let's talk about infrared. First off, is infrared harmful? The answer to this is no. Hold on one second. Hello? Hello. Uh, nothing. Just doing a video real quick for chemistry. You're good. What's up? It's one thousand copies per machine per month. Yes, on Monday when I come in, I will be resetting it. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Bye. Okay, so in this, sorry about that. Infrared. Is infrared harmful? No. But what are infrared useful for? You guys have seen this before. Maybe you've seen it in a movie or a TV show or for... All of you out there that's all about Call of Duty, maybe you've seen this on the thermal scopes. Infrared is heat that's being radiated off. So what do we use for? We can use thermal scopes, thermal imaging to see heat. That's what infrared is useful for. We can't see it with the naked eye, but we have machines that can pick it up and show it to us. So you've seen that before. Then we have the visible light spectrum, okay, which is this little slither right here, as I've covered that multiple times. Is the visible light spectrum, is visible light harmful to you? I'm praying all of you are saying no, because if you said yes, then you should be dead right now because there's all sorts of color all around you. All right, so the visible light spectrum is not harmful. No. What's the visible light spectrum used for? Yes, ladies, you could go on and look and say for you to look fashionable. Or you could look and say that it's there for you. Uh, uh, gosh, I don't know. It's just useful for colors, for us to see colors. Okay, It's useful for me because when I ride over on that board here in a minute and there's all that stuff that's junked up in there all together, you're going to be like, how can I look and say, like, how do I know? Any oh, gosh, what do I do? Like, 
he's writing all in black and I can't tell what is what. It's just why I use the different colors. And trust me, it matters because where all my writing comes together and mixes up, the different colors split it out to where you can see it. That's how color's useful for me. Now let's break in here into ultraviolet. Is ultraviolet rays harmful? Yes, they are harmful. You look and you say, Mr. Hall, what do you mean they are harmful? Ultraviolet rays can lead to death. What do we always hear about from sun, uh, sunscreen companies and stuff? You gotta be putting that sunscreen on. You don't want that SPF 50 at least. You know why? That sun, it's got UV rays. That's ultraviolet rays. It's coming for you. It's going to hit you. That's what you're caring about. That's what you're looking at. So ultraviolet rays are harmful. Now, how are they useful? Think how they're useful for us. Ultraviolet rays are useful, that's right ladies, to get your tan for the prom because you got to look fine. you got to be like, mm, you know, I'm pale and white. This is not good. i got to get myself as dark as a piece of tan leather, something like that. Please don't do that. That is, no. Okay, what are they useful for though? Ultraviolet rays, all jokes aside, we use those within tanning beds for that you can actually speed up the tanning process. Okay, what's happening in that, and here in a little bit I'll show you an image over there with my horrible art skills. Well, what happens is ultraviolet rays, they come in and they penetrate the skin. Now that's as far as they can get, they can get to the skin, and what happens is they're actually killing skin cells. When they kill those skin cells, that's why we turn darker, is because what's happening, the skin cells are dead, so they're turning darker, so now we look darker, we're like, yo, got my tan in, yeah, okay? But they are harmful, because what can UV rays lead to? They can lead to skin cancer, we'll talk more about that in a little bit. So let's jump here to x-rays. Are x-rays harmful? The correct answer behind that is yes, they can be harmful. They can kill you. How can they kill you? What is x-rays useful for? We use x-rays to look solely at bones. Think about it. If you think you've broke your arm, what are they going to do when you get to the hospital? They're going to take an x-ray. So you look and you say, well, Mr. Hall, how is that? Like, if that's harmful, why are they exposing me to it? They expose you to it for just a limited amount of time. It's super short, and they keep track of that in your medical records to see how many x-rays you've had before it becomes deadly. A great example of this is those x-ray techs and stuff that's in the room. If you ever look, they'll have, like, badges that they're literally sensing how much radiation they've been exposed to. If they've been exposed to too much, it'll turn a certain color. And same thing for doctors. Like, if they get exposed to too much radiation, it'll turn a certain color so that they know, hey, we need to keep them away from this. They've been exposed too much. This is not good. But it takes a whole lot of x-rays before you're going to have to worry about it. Like, my last dentist visit was very interesting because I went to Aspen Dental. And I'm telling you, they took a, an x-ray of every tooth. I was being sarcastic when I said that until the dentist came in and I brought it up and I said, y'all literally take an x-ray of every tooth. And she looked at me and said yes. And then she showed me every one of my teeth. And I was like, whoa, that's cool. So in this, x-rays are harmful, yes, to you, but they are also useful. Uh, the scientists that actually discovered x-rays, actually that's what led to their death was the cancer coming from it. And just like ultraviolet light uh, rays, what happens with x-rays? It penetrates through the body, but it gets so deep as to the bone. So it can cause skin cancer, bone cancer. It can cause all sorts of issues. And then our last one, gamma rays. And I'm not even going to hold off on this one. You're going to look and say, duh, deadly Mr. Hall, go boom. Make things go boom. That actually ain't what we're talking about when we're talking about the gamma rays. Gamma rays are what were released after the bombs have been dropped. That radiation is what's there that's causing more deaths, more fatalities, 
and people don't even know it. You can be exposed to gamma radiation and die without ever knowing it. Because what happens is gamma rays penetrate anything. Go back to x-rays for a minute. If you're getting an x-ray, what do they put around you or put over you? They put a lead vest. They put something there for protection. That lead is there because the x-ray can't penetrate the lead. Perfect example, when I got my x-ray teeth, they put a lead vest over me. Why? Because all my vital organs that's here in this area are now protected. They're not being hit by x-rays. Even though it's so small, they still take steps to make sure and guard the other parts of your body. Go to gamma rays. Gamma rays don't care. Gamma rays, I mean, it's like the honey badger. They just don't care. They just look and say, yo, lead, you ain't stopping me. They just kick in, jack it up. Nothing will stop them. They will come in there and they will jack things up. Okay? We're going to talk about this here in a minute. But with this, gamma rays are deadly. Now, how are gamma rays useful? I'm going to talk about that over on the board here in a second. So in this, this is the electromagnetic spectrum, some information that you can get from it, breaking it down, how is it useful, what can we look at. In this, this is what I'm going to leave the electromagnetic spectrum with and jump back over to the board. There's very, very in, uh, important information here. Here's the things that I want to stress out to you besides what I've stressed so far. The new quantity of measurement that we're going to talk about. There's one more quantity of measurement dealing with our light equations that we care about, and it's energy. So we have energy here, we have wavelength, and we have frequency. Okay. If you look here close enough, you can see that frequency is in that inverse seconds like what I showed you. That is inverse seconds is equal to 1 over seconds, which is equal to hertz. Don't be that confused with it. Just use hertz. I just present the information so that you make sure that you have it. Wavelength for the purpose of this is in meters. And then they talk about, as we look, on this electromagnetic spectrum, as we go from right to left, so from right to left, we go from radio waves towards gamma rays. It gets more harmful, more deadly. Another way of looking at it, energy is increasing. So energy will increase as you go from right to left on this. Just think about where you're starting radio waves, not harmful to you, to where you're ending gamma rays, extremely harmful. In this, you can also look at the wavelength. The wavelength is inverse, inversely proportional to this. So what I'm saying with this is that wavelength will go from left to right in increase. So as we go left to right, wavelength, which is lambda, will increase. Think about this, the length of the wave. Another way of looking at this, the smaller the wavelength, the more energy it has. Okay? It's kind of like, um, how do I gonna describe it? Uh, okay, think about this. If you took a hammer and you just kept dropping it and looking like damage wise, if I dropped it every once in a while, that's like a really long wavelength. So, not a lot of damage. But you go over here to gamma rays, it's like, dah, 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 it's like a jackhammer going through. And that is very, very harmful, very, very deadly. If you have questions on this, just ask me. I know this can be a lot at first. Trust me, as we go through, we're going to use this more. So just remember, as you go from right to left on the electromagnetic spectrum, the energy will increase. As you go from left to right, wavelength will increase. Okay? So let's jump over here, over on the other board, and let's finish up. Let's talk about energy. Let's talk about why all this is taking place, okay? All right, so on this, I want to jump back over. We're going to stick with these light equations. We're going to finish them up, but also with that, another thing I want to add on there, 
I want to add and talk a little bit about what's really happening, try to give you a little bit of a visual of what's happening as we go from right to left on that electromagnetic spectrum. So let's do it this way, okay? Now, for anybody who makes fun of my drawing skills, I do not care. Right, so like, there is a bone. This is our bone. Let's draw some skin on it. There's the skin. There's like muscle tissues and stuff. So let's do the first layer of skin, second layer, third layer of skin. Oop, that ran together real bad. All right, so this is what's taking place whenever you're looking at that. Okay, so what's happening from radio waves all the way over to visible light? What takes place is we have waves of light that comes in. Okay, it hits our skin. When that wave hits our skin, what takes place is our skin is strong enough, it just throws it off. So if we just pop it right off, and it's reflected off. It won't penetrate our skin. So this is radio waves. To visible light. Okay, and those are types of electromagnetic radiation. We'll go more into that later on. Now, in this, this is where things get interesting. So let's jump to the first one. Once we break from visible light, you go to ultraviolet light. And this is what will take place. So ultraviolet, I'm going to use purple, comes in. It penetrates the skin. But it can't penetrate all the way through down to like the muscles of the bones. What will happen is the skin, it goes into the skin and it can come out or be absorbed. So this is what's taking place, okay? And this is UV rays or ultraviolet rays. What happens is this comes in. It comes into the cell. What happens in the cell, what is the control center for the cell? The nucleus. What's in the nucleus? Our DNA. Within our DNA, I'll let you know, 99% of DNA is what we call junk. This is just like markers that look and say, hey, these are your ancestors, or hey, this is where you come from. This is like the stuff that they can take, like... Uh, 23 and me or ancestry and all that stuff they can take like your DNA look at it and say this is where you're from that's the junk DNA of what they're looking at they're looking at certain markers 99% of that doesn't matter in our normal everyday life our body to function doesn't matter 1% is the super important part and remember, every cell has this DNA. So what happens is these rays come in and they poke holes in that DNA. When they're poking the holes in the DNA, what will take place when they're poking the holes in there, it literally will alter the genetic code. It changes the DNA. Once it changes the DNA, what this does, if it hits the 1%, is what will matter. If it hits the 99%, who cares? Doesn't matter. If it hits the 1%, this is the part of our body that it's dealing with uh, cellular regeneration, it deals with all the enzymes, the proteins, the things that make our cell function, what gives our cells life, which gives our whole organism life because that 1% is so important if it gets hit and altered in the right way it leads to cancer. You don't want that. Now, am I looking and saying you absolutely need to stop getting any tanning beds? That is your decision what you want to do with it. OK, 
Okay, am I saying that you go outside, you absolutely have to wear sunscreen? It's your decision what you're going to do with it. I'm not going to look at you and dictate what you need to do on this. I'm looking at you and just giving you the science behind it. In this, these UV rays can't penetrate all the way through the whole body, though it can only get to the skin. That's why that UV rays can lead to skin cancer. Okay? So that's what you're looking at with the UV rays. Now let's look at x-rays. So x-rays, let's say they come in here. Now what's x-rays do? Everybody knows x-rays. X-rays go all the way to the bone. It'll go all the way through and penetrate in there, and the reason as to why it goes all the way through to there, this gives us the ability to look. Let's say that this bone had a break right there. That x-ray will give me the image so I can see you broke your bone. But it'll go all the way through here. Now it can come out or be absorbed. And here's the thing that'll happen with it. This is why we use it for such a short amount of time. It's extremely quick. I mean it's like boom, done. In this, this x-ray penetrates all the way through. All of this still applies. But now it's going through the skin, muscle, tendons, ligaments, everything in our body, it's going to our bone. It's penetrating through there to where this 1% now has changed. It not only can form skin cancer, it can form all sorts of cancers. That's where that comes into play at. Now, breaking outside of this, last one we're going to talk about, gamma rays. Okay? I'm not going to use the abbreviation. I'm just going to use the word gamma. Gamma rays are the mad daddy happening. They're going to do what they want. They're the bullies. Don't care. They're going to come through here and jack it all up. They don't care about anything. Gamma rays are just going to shoot through you, and they're just going to, I mean, it's literally like a machine gun on your DNA. They're just like, ah, just rolling through it, just going nuts on your DNA. And what this will do is when they go through here, this is where big time issues occur. Now, I'm not going to get in an argument over the Hulk, okay? Yes, I'm absolutely looking at you and telling you, you should not go to expose yourself to gamma rays because if you do that, you're going to uh, really have some major complications. If you look at me and say, well, I'm willing to chance that I want to become the Hulk. Well, good luck if you want to listen to a magazine and a fictional character created by Stan Lee. Rather than listen to your chemistry teacher, uh, I have video proof. I am telling you not to do it. You should not expose yourself to anything that is harmful. Hint, while we're having this conversation, educational and life-saving. So, in this, gamma rays go through and they lead to all sorts of cancers. Now, I told you, we are going to talk about how gamma rays are useful. Gamma rays can be extremely useful to us, but in them, they still share risk. So, in this, something to think about. All right? If you've ever watched a movie before, you've probably seen this. Uh, any sad movies especially. Or medical shows or something like this. I have no idea if this was on Grey's Anatomy or not. I got one episode into that and I couldn't handle it anymore. But let's say somebody has a tumor in the brain. Here's my brain. Here's a tumor. In this, what's something that they use to treat cancer within people is they'll use radiation. Now within this, what you can see is different versions of things going on. Now, absolutely, if that's in a certain portion of the brain, there's brain surgeons that will look and say, let's give this thing a shot, we're going to try to go in and cut it out. But there's just some certain parts of the brain that if there's a tumor in there, they just can't go in and cut them. Because if they go in and they cut, they'll kill you. Okay, so in this, 
What could we do? Is we could fire off some gamma rays at it. Now in this, let's say we had six sources of gamma rays. So here's source one, here's source two, three, four, five, and six. Now here's the thing, if all of them are going to fire right there, and we're going to, we wouldn't want to stack all these up like this and fire them all straight through. Because think what's happening at that point. If we fire all the way straight through, all of this area of the brain is getting slammed. What's the goal with the gamma rays? Where our goal is to kill, can is to kill cells. That's why when somebody goes through chemotherapy, what they're doing is they're literally they're, we're exposing their body to radiation. And what we're doing is we're killing cells. And whenever we're doing that, that's why those patients are took extremely well care of because they have a whole lot more susceptible, uh, they're a lot more susceptible to things than what others are. So you have to be extremely careful in that. But this is what we can do with this case, is we can take this out. And this is what we can do. From every one of our sources, we can fire these gamma rays off. Now, that whole section right there is being exposed to gamma rays. But look what happens if we just fire off all of these and it has a certain intersecting point. Where does every one of those sources of gamma rays, where do all of them collect and every one of them's hitting? Every one of them, all of them are being focused in right there at that tumor. To do this, yes, it's absolutely, it can kill you, which is why they do release forms and everything. Uh, when you're dealing with medical things that are like this that could lead to major, major problems. In this, this could kill you, but they're going to do something like this if that's there and it's guaranteed to kill you. This is a chance of saving you or a chance of extending your life versus that, it's absolutely going to kill you. Okay? So, that's what we're going to leave off on. I'm going to stop there because the video is it's, it's going to be a little bit longer than I expected it to be. I apologize for that. We will pick back up here on the light equation, I'm going to give you the last one, but we'll break it down more. The last light equation is energy equals Planck's constant times nu. And this, this H, that is a constant. I'll give you that constant in the next video. And right here in nu, when you're looking at that, what you're looking at is frequency, just like you were before. And capital E is energy. If you have any questions, just reach out to me. Can't wait to see you guys.